Hello Booktube! Today for Tag Tuesday, I will be doing a Try a Chapter Tag. Um, so, yesterday in my discussion about uh, science fiction and fantasy, both um, my science fiction and fantasy journey as well as uh, my thoughts on the science fiction and fantasy that are in my personal library, I mentioned that I was thinking about doing a try chapter tag for some of the science fiction and fantasy that I have in my collection that I'm seriously contemplating pruning when I finally get around to pruning my collection again uh, this coming year. So I selected four books, um, and how this is going to go is I will um, talk about them in the order that I read them in. I'll read the synopsis, uh, talk about the first chapter, and the circumstances in which I bought the books, and then I will talk about whether or not any of them are actually ones that I want to keep and read in the future, or if I want to just get rid of them all, and then I will rank them. So let's get going. So the first book is Prince of Thorns by Mark Lawrence. This is the first book in the Broken Empire trilogy. Beware the Prince of Thorns. When he was nine, he watched as his mother and brother were killed before him. By the time he was 13, he was the leader of a band of bloodthirsty thugs. By 15, he intends to be king. It is time for Prince Honorus Jorg Ancrath to return to the castle he turned his back on, to take what's rightfully his. Since the day he hung pinned on the thorns of a briar patch and watched Count Renard's men slaughter his mother and young brother, Jorg has been driven to vent his rage. Life and death are no more than a game to him, and he has nothing left to lose. But treachery awaits him in his father's castle. Treachery and dark magic. No matter how fierce his will, can one young man conquer enemies with power beyond his imagining? So, that's the blurb. And the first chapter, and really I read two chapters because they're both about four pages long each, um, is him leading his uh, gang of thugs on a raid against a uh, small village in which he and his gang slaughtered the inhabitants. And Jorg makes tasteless, quippy jokes. So why did I buy The Prince of Thorns? So I picked this book up in 2016. Um, and at that time, and for a few years before, and a few years after, if you ask me how I envisioned my library, my personal collection of books, I would tell you that I saw my collection as being predominantly, if not vastly, science fiction and fantasy oriented with a very limited number of like classics and modern contemporary fiction, poetry, drama, nonfiction, both history and other nonfiction and other books. But the vast majority would be science fiction and fantasy. And at that time, I had a strong desire to have a number of um, not only classic works of science fiction and fantasy, but also um, up and coming works and uh, works that are that were current and that were uh, part of the conversation. And Mark Lawrence at the time was relatively new in his career. I think um, he had started his second trilogy. I mean, he's now had about four or five trilogies since then. Um, so that's the story of The Prince of Thorns. Secondly, I looked at The Warded Man by Peter V. Brett. As darkness falls after sunset, the Corlings rise, 
Demons who possess supernatural powers and burn with a consuming hatred of humanity. For hundreds of years, the demons have terrorized the night, slowly culling the human herd that shelters behind magical wards. Symbols of power whose origins are lost in myth and whose protection is terrifyingly fragile. It was not always this way. Once men and women battled the quarrelings on equal terms, but those, those days are gone. Night by night, the demons grow stronger while human numbers dwindle under their relentless assault. Now with hope for the future fading, three young survivors of vicious demon attacks will dare the impossible, stepping beyond the crumbling safety of the wards to risk everything in a desperate quest to regain the secrets of the past. Together they will stand against the night. So this is the first book in a five book series. Um, and the first book, uh, and so the first chapter is an introduction to one of these three um, young people who is 11 at the time and he and his family go to help out um, in the aftermath of a quarreling attack. I first, so the story of the warded man is very much similar to the Prince of Thorns in that at the, when I, I, at the time I picked this book up, which I found this volume and I think most of the series at Golden's Book Exchange, one of the local independent bookstores, it's used bookstores in Austin, Texas. And um, at the time I'd heard interesting, I mean, I'd heard, I'd read reviews of The Word of Man that enticed me to want to pick it up. Also, Peter Rebert was, I think at the time, rather prominent. And I wanted to have as much science fiction fantasy in my collection as I could get. So that's where I picked it up. Thirdly is um, the Halls, is Halls of Law by V.M. Escalada, uh, which is a pen name for some reason of Violet Milan. And this is the first book in a duology, I believe. Here we go. The Ferriman polity has been ruled for generations by those of the Lux bloodline. It is an empire maintained by a standing art military and the talents of the Halls of Law. While the military protects, it is the Halls' talents, those gifted from birth with magical abilities, who serve as the agents and judges of the law. 17-year-old Carita Nast has always wanted a career in the military, just like all her family. Then her talent is discovered, and she knows she'll have to spend the rest of her life as a psychic for the halls of law, giving up her family and all personal connections connection with the outside world. Just as Carita is beginning to accept this, the polity is evaded by strangers from Halia, bent on destroying the halls and killing every talent they can find. Carita manages to escape, falling in with Tel Kursar, a young soldier fleeing the battle that saw the death of the royal family. To avoid the enemy, Carita and Tell enter old mining tunnels in a desperate attempt to carry word of the invasion to halls and military posts that have not yet been attacked. But the tunnels hide a dangerous secret, a long-hidden colony of feelers. Paranormal outcasts, these traditional foes of the halls of law, welcome Carita. Believing she fulfills a prophecy they were given centuries before by the lost race of griffins. With the help of these new allies, Karita and Tell stand a chance of outdistancing the invaders and reaching their own troops. Yet this is only the start of what will become a frantic mission to try and to find an heir to the throne. For if the Hallians capture the future Lux first, it will spell the end of the Ferriman polity and the rule of law. So, the prologue features um, Karita listening in as her older sister and commanding officer is pressured by an inquisitor from the halls of law about the fact that Carita has magical abilities that had for far longer than normal uh, been hidden from them. And then the first chapter is Carita being punished for mouthing off or insubordination during her training in um, her magical academy. So once again, I picked this book up 
uh, because I read a review of it in Blackgate. It's an online uh, magazine that is currently primarily geared towards uh, reviews and critical nonfiction, but 20 years ago was um, a major voice in a brief renaissance in sword and sorcery. So once again, for that period, for a few years between 2016 and 2019, when I saw my, li my personal library as being almost exclusively science fiction, this was a book I wanted to get. Finally, the last of the four, The Thorn of Denton Hill by Marshall Ryan Moresca. Veronix Colbert leads a double life. By day, he's a struggling magic student at the University of Mary Dane. So this is the first in um, the Thorn of Denton Hill um, trilogy, which is part of the wider Mary Dane I think there are 12 or 15 books in the series, all told. Anyway. At night, he spoils the drug trade of William Finmir, crime boss of Denton Hill and murderer of Veronix's father. He's determined to shut Finmore, Finmir down. With that goal in mind, Veronix disrupts the delivery of two magical artifacts meant for Finmir's clients, the mages of the Blue Hand Circle. Using these power-filled objects in his fight, he quickly becomes a real thorn in Finmir's side. So much so that soon not only Finmir, but powerful mages, assassins, and street gangs all want a piece of the thorn. And with professors and prefects on the verge of discovering his secrets, Virenix's double life might just fall apart. Unless, of course, Finmir puts an end to it first. So, the reason why I wanted to pick this book up and the other two volumes in the this trilogy is because this is superhero fiction in a fantasy setting. And um, for a long time, I have wanted to write my own superhero story. Now, I'm not an artist, so the comic book route, as tempting as it is, is going to be rather difficult because I could do the script, but the art would be missing. And so I've been long interested in trying to read um, superhero fiction that is in strictly prose. So that's why I picked this up. Now, of these books, um, do I want to read any of them? Do I want any of them to remain in my collection? And my answer is, no, I don't. Um, when I get around to pruning my collection, all four of these and the ones I have that include sequels, which would be The Warded Man and The Thorn of Denton Hill, I will be getting rid of them as well. So I don't want to read any of them. Now, my ordering for these books going from four, my least, the one that's the worst, to one which is better <laughs> are. So at number four is The Thorn of Denton Hill by Marshall Ryan Moresca. So the chapter starts, um, which I forgot to talk about the, how the chapter started, didn't I? Um, so the chapter starts on an action scene where Veronix is um, robbing um, information from one of um, Finmir's minions. And while that's an interesting start, um, it's just not very well done. It just it didn't really hook me or interest me. At number three is Halls of Law by VM Escalada. Um... I mean, it it was okay, but just I found Karita off-putting and just that sort of opening scene of um, 
joining the Psycor and it just, I've seen it 500 billion times before. So. At number two is The Prince of Thorns by Mark Lawrence. So this one's, I mean, if you're into Grimdark, which I'm pretty sure if you are into Grimdark, you've already read this because this is one of the mainstays of Grimdark fantasy. Um, it will hook you, but while I did manage to read two chapters, because again, those chapters were very short. I mean, about five pages each. Uh, what reading somebody quipping about rape and murder and ravagement, it's, it's revolting. And number one was The Warded Man by Peter Reed Bread, which I think if it interests you, you will probably enjoy it. Um, I ran out of steam with the, the um, with the chapter because it was fairly long and a bit word um, info dumpy. But yeah. So while again, I'm just not whatever is like okay it's so i'm not entirely sure so i mean i'm still not entirely sure what's happened with me in science fiction and fantasy why a genre that i have loved for 20 years and in a lot of cases still do i mean obviously behind me i have a number of manga that are science fiction and fantasy it's just I'm not as into it in prose form as I used to be that um, I mean looking at these four books is helping me to um, well on the one hand it's sad that none of them really attract none of them attracted me none of them really hooked me to want to continue reading them it did help in the sense that it's giving me a clear idea of how deep my pruning of my science fiction and fantasy collection is likely to be. And I'm probably going to need a lot more boxes than I thought. But anyway, Booktube, that's all I have for today. I will be back tomorrow, maybe with a video about NaNoWriMo. I've been meaning to make a writing video. Um for a while and I just have never gotten around to it uh, partially because I'm not entirely sure how to say what I want to say and work my way through my thoughts and feelings about NaNoWriMo. Um, and also I think what I'm going to do for um, November's book haul is instead of doing them piecemeal as I get them in, I'm just going to do one big one at the end of the month. Um, Although I think maybe like individual book hauls, I think do tend to be a bit more popular than just one big one at the end of the month. So maybe I will still continue doing that. I don't know. I'll decide. Um, I think in part is I want to try to hold off on like rushing to 1000 videos. I'm going to, when I get around to doing the call for Q and A, I want to give about a week. So that the 1000th video will be my uh, answers. But anyway, booktube, I'm starting to ramble. So until I see you tomorrow with a new video, thank you. Have a great afternoon and stay safe.